Perplexity and Polymarket come together for an epic future of search team up. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today around one of the themes that we've been exploring a lot lately, which is the future of search. It seems like there is a big bet that in a world newly enabled by generative AI, search is not just going to be a set of links like it is now with Google and like it has been for 20 years with Google, but instead a combination of that and some amount of curatorial synthesis that gives you answers in complete written up form. However, a new partnership from Perplexity and Polymarket shows that going forward, search may also include other types of data in new ways. They tweeted earlier today, we're thrilled to announce our partnership with Polymarket. Now when you search for events on Perplexity, you'll see news summaries paired with real-time probability predictions, such as election outcomes, market trends, and beyond. So Polymarket, for those of you who don't know, is a prediction marketplace that lets people bet on real-world events. It is the latest type of technology platform to draw the ire of Elizabeth Warren, and it is now going to be integrated into Perplexity. TechCrunch writes, when users click on an event on Polymarket, they will now see a summary of news related to the event based on search results from Perplexity. There's also a search box that you can use to ask more questions. Perplexity will also use some data from Polymarket, such as election trends, to show visuals and answers. Now, interestingly, in this news story, there's also a little bit of insider baseball when it comes to Perplexity's business model. The chief business officer over at Perplexity told TechCrunch that, quote, the API business is not a priority for us as we are a consumer-focused company. But still, API usage is growing, with more than 25,000 developers using our API. We have a unique offering that pulls in answers via different internet sources. The way we think about API right now is that it's a means to grow the brand, but not the end. Could we see a perplexity that diversifies its consumer business model with a more B2B model through their API in the future? Certainly doesn't seem insane. Shane Copeland, the CEO of Polymarket, said, When I first built Polymarket, I would tell people I was building the search engine for the future. Now that's coming to life. Next up, another little team up to discuss. NVIDIA is collaborating with the state of California to train California residents on AI. The partnership between the state and the company is aiming to help train 100,000 students, college faculty, developers, and data scientists to harness AI. Business Insider writes that as part of that training, educators in California can get a certification from the NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute University Ambassador Program. But of course, as much as this is about NVIDIA making a bet on the state of California, It also comes at a time that California's relationship with AI is at an inflection point due to SB 1047. If you want the background on what's going on with that, go check out the episode that I dropped last week. I tried to provide a pretty broad overview without too much editorialization, although of course I couldn't avoid it entirely. But to those who are against it, they think that it could have major implications for whether businesses actually stick around to do business in California when it comes to AI. Two more California companies in our next story. TechCrunch reports that Meta and Universal Music Group have updated their licensing agreement and in it started to deal with AI music. TechCrunch again writes, Meta and UMG announced on Monday the expansion of their multi-year licensing agreement, which enables users to share songs from UMG's music library across Meta's platforms without violating copyright. What's most notable about the new agreement is that it states that the two companies are addressing unauthorized AI-generated content. This refers to songs being scraped by AI systems, often without the consent of the original creators. Said Michael Nash, Chief Digital Officer and EVP at UMG, we look forward to continuing to work together to address unauthorized AI-generated content that could affect artists and songwriters so that UMG can continue to protect their rights both now and in the future. Meta is treading carefully when it comes to AI-generated music. As TC writes, they're only releasing generative AI models, including Audiocraft, MusicGen, and Jasco, that are trained with, quote, Meta-owned and specifically licensed music. Now, I continue to think that markets are going to address this particular issue and that the record labels are going to do what they always do, which is swoop in to get a big cut of the new area. But exactly how that plays out, we haven't yet seen. Lastly today, two updates from big tech companies in their AI strategy. Analysts believe that Apple could charge up to $20 for some of its Apple intelligence features. Now, of course, Apple intelligence is being delayed slightly from when it was anticipated rolling out with iOS 18. But now analysts are speculating that these features are not going to be for free. Will that impact how much mainstreaming they actually do? Or is Apple such a behemoth that even with a subscription model, they're still likely to be able to bring on a whole new raft of users? Finally, and yet another indication of how hard it is to be a startup creating AI features, Google Meet has announced a new Take Notes For Me feature, which seemingly imitates the functionality of a ton of startups out there who are AI note-taking apps for things like Google Meet and Zoom, but natively within the Google workspace. So is this a Firefly slash Otter Killer? Does it just mean that all AI startups are destined to be replaced by functionality from the big tech companies? Only time will tell. That's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode. 